Greetings and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Run and today we're playing as Maggie. One thing a lot of people don't realize is that you can use your bombs offensively early on. Maybe they do realize it, they just don't want to do it because maybe you're afraid you're gonna lose some points, maybe you're afraid that you won't be able to use it on secret rooms, on second secret rooms or maybe even Tintadrox. Uh, or anything like that, but I think that realizing that bombs can be used super well, especially offensively early on, is such a tell between someone who's maybe a bit experienced in the game as opposed to someone who isn't. That's not to say that you are bad if you don't use bombs offensively, of course, but I do think that if you have uh, maybe a surplus of bombs, it's it's a good idea, especially if you know that your run is maybe going to be a bit slower, to just kind of start plopping them down and just start to try and kill enemies as fast as possible. And that's why it's so great to get a bomb item early on, I think. Not only because it does allow you to find those secret rooms on the first floor, which can usually be the difference between a really good run or just a bad run, uh, but it also allows you to use your bomb, maybe one or two bombs on the boss, and that really expedites the process of just you killing them. Your regular tears early on don't deal much damage, and I think the hardest part of any run is probably the first few floors, but incidentally that's also when the bombs are most effective, so if you don't really have enough damage to go with your tears, it's not a bad idea to drop a bomb or two to kinda just kinda deal damage a bit faster. If you saw the, the, the game or if you're just watching the screen, you might have noticed that one bomb did almost 80% of the damage to Duke of Flies, and it was a champion version which spawned double flies, and every time you shoot double flies, it splits into more flies, and of course that can get very, very, very hard very fast. And just because of the amount of the flies there are, it just becomes super hard to deal with, and because of it, you're just stuck in this posi position where you're just taking a minute to kill a regular first floor boss. But of course, by using a bomb there, I, I, I sped that process up so fast that I think it really made a difference in the end. And if you notice, we are at the 8th minute now on the 3rd floor, which is obviously very slow, so if I didn't do that on the 1st floor, I would be stuck in a, in a very bad position where I probably wouldn't have a lot of chance of catching either Boss Rush or Harsh. As it is now, of course, the, the things are looking green, we probably won't catch it, at least one of them, but at least we're in a position where I can say that I'm just a bit more comfortable by doing it. I think one of another bosses that are maybe a bit tanky but are very easily dealt with by bombs is Ragman, and of course nobody likes really facing Ragman, a lot of characters don't really start with a bomb, and that's why I always say it's a good idea to explore the rest of the floor first before you even fight the boss. One of the things that I think is important is that um, is to realize that you can use those bombs and you can use them. It, it shouldn't be too bad to use them because I know a lot of people say it or maybe think that you lose a lot of points by using them and that's not necessarily true, you don't really lose that many points. But what you do lose is time if you don't use them and I think time in some cases is much more important than maybe 20 or 30 points in that case. Uh, still, I, I do. I, I think that there, there's a balancing cake there, so it's not maybe as cookie cutter as I'm making out, making it out to be. It's not always a good idea just to plop bombs down and, and just maybe go ham at enemies and bosses whenever you can. But there are definitely some situations where I think that people, some people, not of course all of them, um, do tend to maybe hold on to their bombs just a bit too much, and I think that's not maybe the best idea. E even I do it sometimes, so it's not like I'm contempt from these sins, but I, I, I tend, I, I try to, I'm trying to realize as I'm actually watching my gameplay as to which mistakes I'm making, and definitely I think using bombs is maybe one aspect of how you can go faster in your runs to actually get to boss rush and hush. So that was that was maybe again a bit long-winded, but then again, what isn't when I'm talking about it? So, but but overall, this run was in a very weird position at the start. Thankfully, the bombs helped a bit in the early on, just because, like I said, I did use them offensively. It also did help us find some secret rooms. That was good for points, but sadly, they didn't really contain anything substantial that that just improved the run a lot. Uh, so, so it was a bit of a bummer there, but the rest of it was just odd. It, it seemed like it was going to be a really weak run, and by all accounts, it still is a pretty weak run, but just because we got a combination of items, it, it made me kind of hopeful. The first thing was definitely Magneto. Magneto just changed the run for the better. It allowed us to get enough pennies to buy Diplopia, and then I duplicated the sack of sacks, and with the sack of sacks, of course, you just know that you're gonna get enough consumables to kinda carry you on. It also means that you're gonna get a bunch of battery charges, which you can use with your active item, and at the time, I had the Satanic Bible, and that's obviously great, because that means inf almost essentially infinite black hearts. But later on, I found the blank card, and of course, everybody knows who plays daily, blank card is just... The, the number one item to, to break the game. And of course, with a four room charge, we also had Degas, which means that now we have a four room charge Book of Revelation. So we're getting a spare heart every four charges, which is just, again, infinitely b much better than what we had before. Uh, but even better, if you do find a Yara rune, then we can break the game and just get a bunch of consumables that way. 
I, I, I stuck with it for a bit, but I also found pay to play. And pay to play, if you don't know, is a new trinket which essentially adds a reroll machine to every single treasure room. So if you go in a treasure room, sometimes there's a reroll machine there which you can use to reroll the item on the pedestal. But with the trinket pay to play, it essentially means that it's guaranteed to be there. So from that floor on, it's not necessarily on that floor, but from the next floor onwards, whenever there's an item room, you're definitely gonna find a reroll machine in there. So that means that essentially at that point, the run is kind of broken. We also got the two of diamonds alongside with the blank card, which means that now we have infinite money, which we can use to actually reroll the items. So I know that even though our run was relatively weak, we have a lot of chances to actually get something really good out of it. So of course my plan was go to the item room, just spend a lot of money on the reroll machine, try to get a really good item that will just change your run, and then go onward from there. I knew that it was gonna miss boss rush just because of how slow I was, but I still thought that there was a chance for harsh just because of the virtue that you can get some really powerful items via this way. Uh, I always say that maybe the item rooms don't really contain that many good items, but with the amount of chances we would get at getting something, because I think we could easily reroll like 30-40 items in total, I think that just by that point there's a chance that one of the items that we're gonna get is gonna be strong enough to kind of warrant that we're gonna, we, we will be able to get pretty far in the game. Uh, but sadly or maybe luckily what happened is we got a D100 and of course the D100 is one of those items that just breaks dailies or just breaks any run in general. And when we have so many items behind us, I think at that point I had 13-14 items and with a sack of sacks, maybe what I, what I should have done without trying to reroll immediately is go through the rest of the floor, try to get as many battery charges as possible and then use the D100 to actually reroll myself into a better run. What I did was as soon as I picked it up I used it, it did reroll me into, I, I, it wasn't necessarily a stronger run, it was still a, a relatively decent run but I, I didn't have the battery charges on the ground so I couldn't do it multiple times which means that I was kind of stuck with that one. Because of that I think definitely that I have missed out or maybe it took me a bit too long to actually get to a really powerful run. Eventually I did, but I did miss out on a lot of exploration because of it and I think that's maybe a bit of a bummer and definitely a bit of a mistake on my part just because of course when you use the D100 you're also gonna reroll the sack of sacks that you had before. So I definitely think in that situation I should have gone just got a bunch of batteries and then started rerolling at the end. That would maybe speed up the process a little bit, I would be able to explore a bit more of the Womb 1 and Womb 2, but as it turned out I can't be too upset just because we did get a conjoined with tech x and we also had bookworms essentially we're firing four shots with guppy we're just dealing insane amount of damage you can see that the items on the right just aren't really that great the odd mushroom is relatively decent just because it does allow you to charge just a bit faster but it does decrease your damage and even mascara is an item that you're usually not really happy to see but surprisingly it works extremely well with tech x what it does it reduces your shot speed but it, and also I think your tear delay, but it also increases your damage by a significant amount. So having it with odd skinny odd mushroom, that means that our tear delay is actually relatively unhinged. We're dealing much more damage, not not much more, but we're dealing about the same amount of damage. But our our shots are actually traveling traveling much slower, and with that, because they're traveling slower, they have more time to actually be exposed to enemies. And of course, the more time that the ring is on the enemy, the more damage you deal over that period of time. So it, it's a weird synergy that works surprisingly well, especially with Guppy. That also means that we're producing much more, uh, much m m more flies, and of course, they did deal just a bunch of damage all in all. And in the end, we did finish in a very comfortable spot in 6th sixth, which was really high for what I thought it was. Of course, it did s say it did indicate that this run was going to be rather weak at the start, but even with weak runs, I do tend to find that a lot of people still manage to get to boss rush and just get maybe a really powerful run. That's just how Isaac goes. But I'm really surprised that essentially a lot of people didn't actually get to boss rush in this one and I think there, there were only like four or maybe five in the top leader boards which is kind of crazy and it's maybe really indicative of just how bad this run was but we were in a very comfortable position in the end our dash multi was again still relatively low for what it was of course our exploration bonus was relatively low as well our shrek bonus was okay just because with the d100 you're bound to get eventually some bob items and you're just gonna get a lot of bombs that way and thankfully because of some blood bank machines uh, and the two diamonds before we do we did have quite a bit of coins as well uh, overall a really fun run I definitely think if you played this one right which seems that not too many people did a lot of people have struggled with it uh, at least from for what I've read on the threads uh, but but yeah it, it was a decent one if you played it like I did and especially I think with pay to win with the trinket there's a lot of variants that can go on a lot of people can maybe re-roll or stop at different points and just because of 
people different people play differently even though this is relatively the same run I think the uh, end outcome is gonna be quite different depending on what you did so I'm really interested if you did play the daily please let me know how it went and maybe which items you encountered because I think this is definitely one of those ones where those little minute differences make a very big difference and really change how you play the whole run in the end I hope you enjoyed this one guys and I hope to see you next time